Hello lovely viewers, this is Anita and welcome to another one of my painting videos. In, um, this time we'll be painting this little sketch that I made after receiving 200 likes on my Facebook page. And I really really wanted to incorporate this heart gesture. So that was the sketch and color you know, sample. And here is the finished line art, let's call it this way. Uh, just cleaned up and ready for painting. So the first thing I'm doing is adding lots of water. I really like that in my previous painting and I wanted to try this again. Just uh, painting wet on wet. So the paper is warping a little bit. Um, I might try to actually tape a wet paper instead of a dry one because I did not really enjoy that warping. It was a little bit too much in my opinion. I'm also trying out my newly bought set of um, watercolor paints, which really surprised me. I did not expect it to be this pigmented and um, the way the pigment spreads is much actually more than what I'm used to. So I, I had a feeling that it was just running away from me. I couldn't, couldn't contain it in uh, the areas I wanted, so, um, but I, I'm not really complaining, I really enjoyed it, it was something completely new, but the paint is so vibrant and just, just spreads so smoothly that it's totally worth the, 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 the first surprise <laughs> that I had. So I knew from the beginning that I wanted this picture to have like this bluish greenish uh, color scheme. Uh, the top would be blue to complement the grayish blue um, colors of the cat. And then the lower part would be green because this character is always wearing green. So um, of course if, she wearing a, if she's wearing a kimono, you know, it would be green as well. So I'm adding just a first layer of color just to kind of get an idea of where I wanted them to blend and how I wanted them to, you know, mix together. And I'm using uh, my heat gun a lot um, just to try. <laughs> I was actually really trying to um, get control over the paint. It was hard. <laughs> But I think I managed it in the end. It, it, it wasn't so bad. So the fir the next thing I'm doing is uh, actually the very the most important thing I am doing is adding the color to the cat. And this cat is inspired by the British short hair, so it's um, it has this very bluish grayish uh, color, and I tend to go overboard with the gray. Um, I'm always make it too dark and you can see any of the cat's features it just looks like a very very dark blob and uh, it's, it's kind of a waste because you know the cat is, is a character on its, on its own and I um, I was really careful because I did that in the last picture I painted of those, of those two characters I um, just made the cat extremely dark to the point that some people were asking what it was and uh, of course I wasn't happy with that. <laughs> so I'm adding a very thin layer of this really nice grey color. I think it's a Van Dyke grey. I'm not going to bet my life on it but it comes in a set and it's a really nice neutral neutral grey. Uh, um, neutral grey, of course it's a neutral color. <laughs> but it's a very nice shade that I would normally um, make by combining blue and brown. Um, it's the exact same shade, so it makes my life much, much easier just to have it straight from the pan. So Whenever I'm um, recently in, my, in the recent paintings, whenever I'm, I'm making background uh, by just adding random colors, I try to spread them a little bit uh, onto the characters so that it feathers into the into the character 
itself just to tie them all into like together so that the characters don't really seem like they are just you know pasted on top of the background they're just I want them all to be tied together and thus all of the blue seeps into the cats and the green I'm trying to keep it away from the hair just because the hair is a very bright orange color and you know the bright orange and blue uh, yeah it would just it wouldn't really work but um, if you look closely you can see that there's a very very gentle thin layer of, of that green and blue in the hair as well just not too much so that you know the, the, I wanted the, uh, the orange to really stand out and so it has to have um, the white underneath to be really really bright and I just keep adding uh, layers of color just to try to make the cat uh, to kind of shade the cat and uh, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with the background at this point so uh, I didn't really want knew what those shapes in the background were were they like trees or clouds and so I'm just adding random random shapes and here I'm, let's see I'm blending the color a little bit into the hair as well and also on the kimono just to create a bit of a shadow and then I'm also adding the same color in the shadows around the eyes and under the hair just to, so that the colors are kind of tied I really try to use the color in uh, many different places so that you know the painting usually uses just two or three different colors and they all mix or just used in um, several places I feel that makes it really makes the colors that the, the whole picture just come together and here I felt that the background was a little bit too dark so I added white just white gouache watered down just to um, brighten up some of the areas And I'm adding a few more layers of the grey color. Very, very light layers. I really was afraid to, so that the cat wouldn't be too dark. Whenever I paint characters, I make sure to paint. I actually really not really make sure but I out of my own um, preference I pay a lot of attention to the face just because I feel like it's the, the main feature of the character it just makes it it's just the first thing that you see uh, when you look at the picture your eye is drawn to it just because it's a character so you look at the face and I really wanted to be very detailed and to display the, the character properly, to kind of you know describe it properly. I was uh, kind of struggling with the mouth <laughs> on this character because she has a very wide mouth. And I wasn't sure how to make lips, how to paint them so that they wouldn't seem too weird, even though they're supposed to be, but I still wanted them to be pretty, you know. <laughs> I wanted them to be aesthetically pleasing, even though this character is not really, is not supposed to be pretty. But you know, I want, I like aesthetically, aesthetically pleasing things. <laughs> so I just keep adding extra color and then smudging it because I don't like it, <laughs> and going away from it. Just I was really, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do there. And it's actually really, I find it really refreshing to just paint a little bit and then step away from it, just paint something different and come back with a fresh, fresh look. Rather than just keep working in the same area over and over and get tired of it really quickly. I used to do that 
and um, never again. Painting is freedom, so I don't want to make myself do anything that, you know, that I would feel was uh, not freeing. I'm actually at this point really digging in the white hair on this character, but she has a uh, this bright orange hair, so I'm adding the first layer of the pigment just to kind of figure out how dark I want it to be. On the sketch, uh, she has a different toned hair. It's a little bit um, of an ombre coming from a reddish uh, orange at the top all the way down to this uh, yellowish orange. But uh, I wasn't sure if I really wanted to do it, so I just started. I usually start with a flat wash, just to get the general feel. I mean, I can always add more. I use the same orange on the cheeks. And then I just keep adding strands of hair. To make it a little bit more textured because at the moment it just looks like a flat sheet. And I also added some of that orange to her eyes. I don't know why, to be honest. I just really liked the way it looked. It was a, just a whim. Whenever I make a flat wash in watercolor, I will first use a lot of paint, which then I will spread. And as you can see, there's always a blob of paint at the lower edge. And I will spread the wash from there. And then I will pick up the excess paint just to leave a very thin um, layer of pigment. You can really see it good in, in this piece how I, I pick the paint with a dry brush and I'm very really careful with the kimono I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do because um, the sketch uh, I made did not include a kimono <laughs> it uh, just happened because I, um, I've been watching a lot of um, animes in this um, in the time when I was uh, I was painting it this picture and a lot of those characters and those in the anime were wearing kimonos so I, I just really wanted to paint one but you know they're very nicely patterned so I just I kind of stay away from the kimono and I decided to just finish the other characters first of the cat and so I'm um, I keep adding um, just a lot of little details to the cats hair just um, I didn't want it to be yeah, I, I was really afraid to add too much pigment to make it too shaded that it would be too dark so I just keep adding small uh, little hairs and just just bit by bit just not to overdo it and I think at that point I've decided that it should look really really like um, really mean kind of even because uh, this cat is not nice um, he's not really bad either like but it, but it's just uh, mis 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 I can't pronounce that <laughs> mischievous is that the word <laughs> and I've also decided to add blue because I felt like I said this is a, a British short hair there a little bit of this bluish green gray, grayish color so I wanted the blue to be there, you know, this is a magical cat, it can be blue, right? 
and I'm also trying to seep that blue onto the, the character just to create a bit of a shadow. I don't really have a specific um, way of creating shadows, I just kind of use wherever, whatever. Just as in this case, I wanted to make create depth into the, um, the, the part of the clothing that was a little bit further and hidden under the uh, sleeves. So I've decided to use blue for that. And at this point I've decided that I really wanted this ombre hair, so I'm adding a little bit of uh, yellow at the end and then just adding extra orange and this more of a reddish tint at the top. And I was so extremely happy at this point, it came out really nicely. It immediately added depth to the whole hair area. I mean, they looked really flat before, but now they kind of get this shape. They start to look fluffy and really flowing. That was the, that was my, I really wanted it. I really wanted them to be really flowing. Whenever I um, use, uh, whenever I um, come out of the line with the color that's not supposed to be there, I pick them up with the water brush. That's what you could see me doing a little bit ago. And because the yellow uh, obi belt um, had to be really bright, there was no question, not even like a, you know a case of any green being in there. This is that would ruin the yellow. And I've decided that under, uh, I don't really know how that part is called, but the clothing that you wear under the kimono to be red. Let's just say that it's the inner side. I'm not, I'm not a professional here. <laughs> I don't know how these parts are called. And I thought it would really fit nicely with her hair. So it's actually the exact same um, shade, just I've added a little bit more of that reddish uh, color. And at this point I, uh, I skipped a part because I've added a very big wash of green, several even to the entire image, to her hair, to the obi belt, the kimono, just to change the color a bit. I made the, the kimono match her eyes a little bit better. I've added a few layers of that um, reddish orange so that I wanted it to be a bit more intense. And now I've noticed I'm actually, <laughs> I forgot completely to paint the hands. So I'm not really a good, you know, I don't really like painting hands that much. Um, so, you know, they're really basic and I'm not really paying much attention to them because they're not really important to me. So, just making sure that they have a little bit of depth and... Uh, oh, and here, I, of course, I... A little bit mistake, I pushed the paper too hard. <laughs> Still really, really afraid of adding more color <laughs> to the cats, but I wanted it to look more fluffy, so I decided that maybe just adding little hair here and there wouldn't be that big of a deal. Kind of creating just um, a shadow at the edge of the cats. I mean, I'm not really um, aiming for it to be a realistic, so just so that it stands out from the background a little bit better. And if you like this video, please, please leave a like and subscribe to maybe to my channel. That would really, really boost my confidence. You know, a shameless 
self-advertising. And uh, at this point I've already stopped painting and I switched to the secondary media, which is for me um, uh, colored pencils and um, copic markers. And they're just basically used to enhance the colors wherever I feel that um, I wanted them to be a little bit maybe brighter or maybe just spread out a little bit more uh, or maybe have a little slightly different tint that's where I usually keep layering the colored pencils so you can see I'm adding a little bit of brown and purple for the shadows a little bit of extra pinkish orange color and here I'm using um, the Copics for the eyes because I wanted the eyes to be really really bright and the Copics are good for that because they you know I can keep adding layers without really being afraid of overdoing it so I really like Copics I can I seriously I the Painting with Copics on watercolors was my biggest <laughs> invention, and uh, I, I, you know, um, I, I can't find the English word for it. But I was really happy when I dis oh, discovery. Yes, thank you, discovery. It was my biggest discovery, and I was really happy when that happened because it, it's just—it's so easy to use Copics on top of watercolors and uh, just enhance the lines. It make everything pop. It's really, really handy. So I usually use a warm um, gray tones. In this case, the main gray is a cold one. Uh, I think it's cold number three. Um, I, I think yes, it is. And uh, I just keep adding it every shade, shaded area, just adding a bit of a depth. And it's for me personally, it's much easier than using watercolors for all those um, little bits and crevices. It's faster too, and uh, the effect is similar. So time saver. Adding bits of color just to make the hair pop a little more. And at this point, it's more, more or less just adjusting, just enhancing and adjusting and uh, making the colors vibrant and the shading better. And, uh, and here I've decided finally just I am not going to be agonizing over a perfect pattern. I'm just going to make flowers. And not even patterny flowers, just random flowers with my, uh, with my Copic. It layers nicely over the green, so it's just basically a dark green. And uh, it's perfect. And look, such little effort and it's immediately draws attention and adds a point of interest in it. It's such a simple thing, just a few lines with, uh, with the Copic. Here I'm just adding a little, the inner side, just to give them a little bit more depth. I wasn't happy so I added even darker grey to the middle of the of the petals. I needed them to be really dark for what I was planning to do next. And uh, I wanted the obi to be patterned as well, so I've chosen this really funky kind of a wood pattern, I guess. Bit of a wood pattern with a lack of different description. <laughs> It's just basically lots of swirls and circles and just for a different and here I'm actually this is what I was planning this is the it's a hidden plan this is actually my golden gouache it's uh, 
to to give this little bit of a rich feeling to the picture. I, I felt like the kimono had to be really rich. So the whole belt is covered with gold. And then I'm doing the same, adding the same to the petals, just giving them a little bit of an outline and uh, that's why I needed the petals to be really dark so that the gold would stand out a little bit better. And for the darker areas I've added just a tiny bit of a darker color because of course the gold would not be <laughs> uh, automatically darker in the shading. And here are the last bits, just my favorite little white gouache. It's uh, my definitely my favorite part of painting. It's uh, it makes everything pop. It's just incredible. I'm way too overwhelmed with my own painting. Oh my god! No, it's just that you know the, the painting usually looks very flat up until this point, and then by adding all those little bits, it's very. Mm, gratifying because I feel oh, oh I'm finally at the end of the picture and uh, it's everything starts to look just the way I wanted it to very finished and complete and I'm adding a little bit of the detailing to the kimono and just random things like little hairs to the cats and little pops of uh, of glow to the hands. Just anywhere I felt that the um, sun would hit, just the light. Even though there is no really a specific light source in that painting, but it's just something that felt right. And whenever I'm not really happy with what I painted, I just keep... Uh, it's really easy to correct the, the white gouache. And that's it! And that's actually it! It's... Uh, it's done! <laughs> even though... Although even though it was such a small painting, such a long, such a long time to finish. So thank you very, very much for watching and I hope um, you've learned something interesting from it. And uh, I definitely had fun talking to myself. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.